Hey, welcome to the Educational AD Podcast and our first episode of uh, What's Up Wednesday. This time we're going to have communication coach Betsy Butterick. We'll be right back with Betsy, but first let's hear from our podcast sponsors. We want to thank Violet Defense for their support of the podcast. Go to violetdefense.com for more information. Violet Defense is dedicated to protecting our world from germs by bringing the power of UV disinfection to everyday spaces. Their patented technology enables them to harness the power of the sun to incorporate ultraviolet light into products and environments like never before. Whether you're ready to implement existing products, or if you'd like to explore researching and developing a custom deployment of their technology for your school, Violet Defense has the solutions and the experience you need. Once again, go to violetdefense.com for more information. We also want to thank Sideline Interactive for their support. You know, it's becoming harder and harder to fund an athletic department, but Sideline Interactive's indoor scoring tables and video boards can generate $10,000 or more every year while creating excitement in the gym and the ultimate game day experience for your student athletes. Go to sidelineinteractive.com or call 832-786-0302 to schedule a live web demo and see their tables and boards in action. You can also email them at sales at sidelineinteractive.com for more information. That's sales at sidelineinteractive.com. We also want to thank Wall of Fame by Vital Signs. You know, they are on a mission to bring your school's legacy to life. They provide a variety of interactive touchscreen video consoles and an extensive library of templates to make it easier than ever to recognize the athletic achievements of your students, both past and present. For more ideas on how to showcase your school's diverse history, along with your proudest moments, go to vitalsignswalloffame.com or learn more and get started with your own digital Wall of Fame tribute. Call them at 614-981-3589 or email them at sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com. That's sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com. We also want to thank our good friends at Huddle. Remember, at Huddle, we power sports. More than 180,000 teams, including some of the best in the world, use Huddle to improve the performance of their teams and their athletes using video and analytics. Huddle's the complete performance platform. They have online tools, mobile and desktop apps, smart cameras like the Huddle Focus. Of course, there's analytics and a whole lot more. Huddle's built for every level of play, from club and youth teams up through high schools and colleges, and even professional teams are using Huddle to raise the performance level of their teams. You're in pretty good company with over 6 million users, including your student athletes, a lot of their parents, and the coaches of the teams that you're trying to get your kids recruited to. If you want to find out more about what Huddle can do for you or how your school can become a Huddle school, go to Huddle.com and talk to their professionals. Remember, at Huddle, we power sports. We also want to thank Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack for being the sponsor of our Athletic Director's Toolbox segment. Athletic surveys by Lifetrack are a quick, easy, and affordable way for you to collect some comprehensive data that allows you to evaluate and improve your entire athletic program. Athletic surveys by Lifetrack also gives you access to the 95% of the players and the parents who really love your program, and it gives them a voice to help demonstrate the importance that a positive athletic experience has for them. Go to athleticsurveys.com and check out their testimonials, and then give them a call at 1-800-738-6466, or email them at info at athleticsurveys.com to get started. If you've never used a survey to check the pulse of your parents or your players, you're really missing out on some important information. Talk to the professionals at Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack, and let them help you take your athletic program from good to great. And we also want to thank our good friends at Hometown Ticketing, the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. 
You can learn more about what Hometown Ticketing can do for your program by going to hometownticketing.com. Hometown Ticketing, simple and easy online ticketing. Hey, welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast and our very first episode of what we're going to call Wednesday Wisdom. Uh, We've got a group of truly top-notch, nationally known uh, professionals in their area that each week uh, they're going to share a nugget uh, that hopefully is going to help us as athletic directors and coaches do a better job. So uh, our very first guest is a good friend, uh, previous podcast uh, guest, Betsy Butterick, uh, the communication coach. Betsy is a uh, former college athlete, former college coach, and now she works with coaches, with universities, with businesses on how to communicate better. Certainly, you know, communication is an important tool uh, in an AD or coach's toolbox. So Betsy, welcome to Wednesday Wisdom. Thanks, Jake. I appreciate you having me back, especially for the inaugural episode of Wednesday Wisdom. And today I'd like to share with you a a situation that came up this previous week in the work that I was doing with a particular college. I was meeting with a group of athletic trainers and I I have to give a little plug here. When I was a collegiate student athlete, part of my work study to help pay for school was working in the athletic training room. I have so much respect for athletic trainers and the way that they literally piece us together with tape and treatment and keep us going at the college level specifically, even at the high school level. And I know oftentimes there's smaller training staffs when we're talking about high school sports versus college sports. And depending on the college, one athletic trainer may have multiple teams or at more of a division one level, you've got kind of one athletic trainer per team. Regardless of the group size or the level, college or high school, this is a group that I oftentimes feel like takes gets taken for granted, if you will, as far as they're doing their job. And we sometimes as coaches and even as athletes don't recognize the depth of commitment that it takes to do their job and do it really well. So in particular, I was sitting down with this group and and they were talking about some of the frustrations and challenges that they have with getting student athletes to come in regularly to do their treatment knowing that they can't do their job if an individual doesn't show up. And what was interesting is the head athletic trainer said, Betsy, I have a question for you. There's one excuse, and she put the excuse in air quotes. She said, there's one excuse that comes up often where student athletes will tell me, oh, I I didn't reach out to you or I didn't come in for treatment because I know you're so busy. She said, what do I do with that? because I feel like they're, they're trying to be respectful, and yet I also feel like it's an excuse. And that's what I wanted to bring into today's Wednesday Wisdom, because this applies outside of sports as well. I've known several individuals that say, oh, well, people didn't reach out because they said, oh, you're so busy, I don't wanna bother you. The reply that I gave her was, initially, you can start by validating and expressing gratitude for the sentiment behind the excuse of, I want to be respectful of your time and conscious of the fact that you have a lot on your plate. And then I said, I'm going to ask you to redirect and re-emphasize where they have the opportunity to take a little more accountability. And the response I gave was some semblance of, thank you for recognizing that I do have a lot on my plate and my time is very valuable. You as a student athlete are incredibly important to me and I've allocated time in my busy schedule for your treatment. So the only thing that becomes disruptive is when you don't keep your appointment times. So in that short span, we validated and acknowledged and expressed gratitude for the fact that yes, I am very busy and I love that you know that and you're conscious of that. And we've redirected to the only thing disruptive is when you don't keep your appointments. And so it's likely that that student athlete, if they truly are concerned about how busy we are, will now make a different choice for action in the future. A carryover from that conversation, it led into just student athlete accountability in general and how can we, as someone who's not the coach and someone that's you know not a parent or a teammate, as an athletic trainer, how can you increase the accountability of student athletes coming in for treatment? And the individual that was asking the question said, Betsy, what do I do if I've got a student athlete who keeps saying he's going to come in, he's going to come in, but then he doesn't come in. And now I have to go to his coach and tell him, hey, this person's not coming in. And I said, I would always start by telling the student athlete that you're going to tell the coach, not in a threatening way where you're hanging it over his head, but saying, hey, 
I'm responsible for helping you get back on track so that your coaches know what to expect in terms of what they can ask of your body during practice. So when you don't come in for treatment, your coach thinks that we're doing things together that aren't happening and they're going to place expectations on your body that aren't realistic based on your injury. So when you don't show up for a few sessions, I need to now tell your coach that we have to level set expectations or else it's likely that you're going to get more injured instead of go the other direction, which is what we're aiming for. So I said, I would always tell the student athlete first, hey, you haven't shown up for a couple sessions. I need to inform your coach so that we can reset expectations for what they can ask of you in practice. Typically, when that happens, the student athlete will say, no, 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 I'll come in, I'll come in. You don't have to tell coach, right? Even if they do that, you need to stand firm and say, I love that you're gonna come in and that you're suddenly motivated to do so. I still need to tell coach again for your safety and so that we can reset expectations together. If you do that once, not only will that conversation help keep the coach informed, that student athlete is much more likely to come in regularly so that you don't have that conversation with coach in the future. It's one thing to do that without telling the student athlete you're doing it, but that sometimes can cause a rift in the relationship where there doesn't need to be one. Open, transparent communication. This is what I'd like to do. If you don't do this, I need to do this because I value your safety and because I wanna make sure that your coach is on the same page with what we're doing and then have the conversation directly. Wow, uh, just as you were talking, it was taking me back to my own days as an athlete and visiting the trainer, uh, not too often, but uh, a, a few times. And then, you know, later as a coach, you know, working with the trainer, and then um, most recently as an athletic director, you know, working with coaches and trainers. Great, great stuff. Um, we're going to have some follow-up questions for Betsy. We're going to take a quick break, hear from a couple of our sponsors, and then we'll be back. Uh, this is Wednesday Wisdom, and we're visiting with Betsy Butterick, the coach's communication coach. Okay? We'll be right back. We want to thank Sideline Interactive for their support of Wednesday Wisdom on the Educational AD Podcast. Sideline Interactive's indoor video scoring tables and video boards can generate $10,000 or more every year while also creating excitement in the gym and the ultimate game day experience for your student athletes. Go to sidelineinteractive.com or call 832-786-0302 to schedule a live web demo and see their tables and boards in action. You can also email them at sales at sidelineinteractive.com for more information. That's sales at sidelineinteractive.com. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. We also want to thank Huddle for their support of Wednesday Wisdom. Remember, at Huddle, we power sports. More than 180,000 teams, including some of the best in the world, are using Huddle to elevate the performance of their athletes and their teams using video and analytics. Huddle's the complete performance platform. They have online tools, mobile and desktop apps, smart cameras like the Huddle Focus. You heard me mention that we have a Huddle Focus in our gym and our volleyball and basketball coaches just love it. Of course, there's analytics and a whole lot more. Huddle's built for every level of play from the club and the youth levels up through high school and colleges and even professional teams are using Huddle to improve the play of their athletes. You're in pretty good company with over 6 million users, including your student athletes, a lot of their parents, and the coaches of the college and university teams that you're trying to get to recruit your kids. If you want to find out more about what Huddle can do for you and how your school can become a Huddle school, go to Huddle.com and talk to their professionals. Remember, at Huddle, we power sports. We're back with Betsy Butterick, communication coach, uh, communication expert. Betsy, uh, really great advice uh, on that communication component of, you know, validating, you know, the student athlete and then, you know, holding them accountable. Uh, I've got a couple of questions, you know, for so many high schools these days, and again, it's getting better, but for so many uh, they don't have an athletic trainer. And so it kind of falls on the AD or many times the coach ends up serving in that role. So do you have any advice, any suggestions, any tips for, you know, now it's the coach, the head football coach, head basketball coach, whatever it is, um, who's now wearing their trainer hat 
in having those conversations with their student athletes about, you know, coming in and, and getting those, those treatments, any, any techniques or tips for them? Yeah. I mean, I could do a short video series on how to tape an ankle, a wrist and a shin, and also how to show you how to make the best possible ice bag. Um, the key really is sucking the air out of the bag before you spin it and tie it in a knot. Um, knowing that not every school, especially at the high school level, has an athletic trainer position, the conversation becomes even more important between the coach and the student athlete or the athletic director and the student athlete about taking care of their body. In that case, for someone who let's say is less motivated to do the rehab that they need in order to get their body back to a, a place where it's safe, if I were that coach or that athletic director, I would try to speak directly to what I know that individual values. So let's say it's a student athlete who values playing time or a student athlete who values the opportunity to practice with their teammates. They're there for more of the social aspect, which we see a lot at the high school level. Being able to frame your ask that they take care of their body, that they do their treatment in the context of what they value is one way to effectively communicate and, and possibly motivate that individual to do what we need them to do. So having a conversation of like, Jake, you know, I know you really love practice because you get to hang out with your teammates until you do the rehab that you need to, to come back from this injury, you're going to be limited in that ability. And I want to get you back with your friends as soon as possible. So if you could do the rehab exercises every night this week, that would be fantastic. So a conversation, something like that, speaking directly to what they value, but putting in the context of the thing that I'm asking for or requesting. Oh, yeah, again, makes perfect sense. Um, the other question I have for you um, is, again, I guess more geared for the athletic director now. Um, for those schools that don't have a trainer, you know, obviously there's a cost <clears throat> involved to the school district. What are some um, uh, tips for that athletic director who now has to have that conversation with a principal, a superintendent, a board member about the value of having an athletic trainer in their program. Uh, any uh, suggestions in that area? Yeah, and there's a lot of different directions that we could go with this. And you mentioned in fundraising and fundraising I found, especially at the high school level comes from parents who have the financial means to donate. Also from parents whose children have a fantastic experience. So if we go back to the experience aspect, if I were an athletic director advocating for the position of an athletic trainer, I would present it in likely two ways. One, that the health, well-being, and safety of our student athletes is a top priority. And without the position of an athletic trainer, we're not doing everything that we can to ensure the safety and well-being of our student athletes. Now, counter to that or adding on to that is when we have someone whose sole responsibility is to help support the health, safety, and well-being of our student athletes, that lends itself to our student athletes being able to have an elevated experience. When you have student athletes that have an elevated experience, their parents are happy. Happy parents tend to donate. And that's kind of the full circle that we could come to there. So I think student athlete safety and well being, especially in an age where we are starting to focus, especially at a younger age, on an individual's mental health, this is more of, I'll say, an easy ask, even though it still has an associated cost, than maybe in previous years where the focus wasn't so much on student athlete mental health. So making that ask and framing it in the context of number one, safety, but number two, elevating the quality of the experience in part so that we can increase the likelihood that we're going to get donations to our school and to our programs. I love the, the aspect of focusing on the positive. A lot of times it's, um, well, if we don't have an athletic trainer and somebody gets hurt, you know, we could get sued. Uh, right, and you look at right. the negative, which is certainly true, but yeah. uh, enhancing the student athlete experience, that's really uh, kind of a private school uh, motto uh, that uh, a lot of public schools are now embracing. Uh, I love mm -hmm. that idea. Okay. Well, and the reality too, Jake, is, is you can, you know, it can result in a lawsuit and I've seen it happen. And I think there's a, maybe a difference between being negative and being realistic. I also see that when people are focused only on the negative that could happen or the worst case scenarios, we show up very differently in those spaces. So mm -hmm. if I'm going to the board and I'm preaching doom and gloom and we have to avoid you know, getting in trouble, we have to avoid getting sued, right. that's gonna create a very different environment than, hey, we have an opportunity to do something really beneficial long-term while also creating all these other positives. And being consciously aware of what happens when 
we're realistic and saying, yes, we could get sued. And also we can be proactive instead of reactive. That's often the differentiator is what right. can we do proactively so that we don't have to be reactive? No, no. Again, you're absolutely right. Great, great stuff. Betsy, if one of our listeners wants to reach out and, and pick your brain on, on this topic or others, and if you have not been to you know, uh, Betsy Butterick's uh, website, you really need to check it out. Some really tremendous resources. Um, what's the website and how can they reach out and get a hold of you? Yeah. So it's BetsyButterick.com, B E T S Y B U T T E R I C K.com. You can also find me on Twitter at Betsy Butterick or on Instagram at Betsy underscore the coach's coach. And I would love to connect with you in any of those spaces. Okay. Betsy Butterick, thank you so much for helping us kick off Wednesday Wisdom and uh, all the best in your uh, continued efforts to educate us coaches uh, across the country. My pleasure, Jake. You take care and thanks so much. For listeners, we appreciate you tuning in. Remember the Zoom recordings of all of our interviews are uploaded to the Educational AD Podcast YouTube channel. Uh, once again, thanks for listening today. Come back again next time for another episode of Wednesday Wisdom. We also want to thank Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack for their support of the podcast and for sponsoring the Athletic Director Toolbox segment of the Educational AD Podcast. Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack are a quick, easy, and affordable way for you to collect comprehensive data that allows you to evaluate and improve your athletic program. Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack also gives you access to the 95% of the players and the parents who really love your program. And it gives them a voice to help demonstrate the importance that a positive athletic experience has for them. Go to athleticsurveys.com and check out their testimonials. And then give them a call at 1-800-738-6466. Or you can email them at info at athleticsurveys.com to get started. If you've never used a survey to take the pulse of your athletes or your parents, you're really missing out. Talk to the professionals at Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack and let them help you take your athletic program from good to great. We also want to thank Wall of Fame by Vital Signs. You know, they are on a mission to bring your school's legacy to life. They have a variety of interactive touchscreen video consoles and an extensive library of templates to make it easier than ever to recognize the athletic achievements of your students, both past and present. For more ideas on how to showcase your school's diverse history, along with your proudest moments, go to vitalsignswalloffame.com or learn more and get started with your own digital Wall of Fame tribute. Call them at 614-981-3589 or email them at sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com. That's sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com. We also want to thank our good friends at Hometown Ticketing, the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. You can learn more about what Hometown Ticketing can do for you and your school by going to hometownticketing.com. Hometown Ticketing, simple and easy online ticketing. 